Welcome to Swayam online portal. Today's MOOC program is on urban local governance. And today's video, we will be discussing on urban cities, some of the best cities of the world. It is interesting to see that these urban cities are centers of economic development. Now, how do we categorize urban cities? Urban cities are categorized as they are centers of economic, cultural and social activities. And they are also promoters of growth and development of a country. Urbanization has been increasingly rapidly going and developing across the world in exceptional phase. Presently, there are several cities that stand out for their innovative approaches to urban development, exceptional infrastructure and quality of life. So let's look into some of the cities around the world and see their features, what makes them so beautiful, so special and why do they stand out despite the urgency of development and still maintaining the state of the art preparedness. First, we'll look into the wonderful city of Tokyo. Tokyo is a city and of course the capital of Japan. Tokyo is one of the most populous cities in the world. In fact, there's a challenge from Delhi that the city is becoming so populated that it might overtake Tokyo. But Tokyo has significantly developed in the ages come. It is known for the technological advancement and efficient transportation system despite being so crowded. Now how you see a local station in Mumbai, you can see the Tokyo Metro Rail station also filled with people. Despite all the crowd, they are able to manage the population and also efficiently manage with the transportation they have and the limitation of the place despite being so populous. The city has an extensive and beautiful metro system that covers almost every part of the city making it very easy for the residents to commute to work and other places and they can reduce their transportation uh, taking them privately but using the public transport make it more efficient and less congestion. Congestion would be less as far as this metro system is concerned. Tokyo is also known for its cleanliness, safety and punctuality. Despite being a more populated country as far as Japan's uh, Tokyo is concerned, Despite being a very populous city, it is understood that they have to maintain a system and process so efficiently that they are so punctual and so clean. In fact, if you have to give an example, when the Japanese team went for the football match during the World Cup, was found to have the cleanest dressing room. They are so conscious of their environment. They make sure that even if it is littered by someone else, they clear up the place because they treat that place as their own. And it would be wonderful to see that if you use this model in India. The city has an impressive skyline and Tokyo sky trees, the tallest star in the world, standing at 634 meters. Tokyo is also home to several museums cultural attractions and shopping centers, making it a popular tourist destination. So Tokyo is one city which I think could be referred as one of the most well-managed city despite its population. Next we'll go to another wonderful and beautiful city called Singapore. Singapore is a small island city-state known for its cleanliness green spaces and efficient public transportation system and the sound transportation system is similar to the metro rail which is we discussed in the Tokyo system. 
The city has a well-developed metro system and its buses and trains run on time. And if you enter into Singapore city, all you have to do is take a card and you can travel to the length and breadth of the city without any problem. You don't have to need a own vehicle, but you can use a tra public transport so efficiently. Singapore is also known for its strict laws and regulation to ensure cleanliness, safety and orderliness. They are so strict that they would make it punishable if you litter the place. So cleanliness is an important aspect as far as the Singapore city is concerned, which I think again we can pick up a page from Singapore city's model city and implement it in our country for maintaining cleanliness, safety and orderliness. The city also is a home to several green spaces including gardens by the bay, a futuristic park with the giant super trees and flower domes. It's so beautiful and green. Despite its limitations, they are able to maintain the place so beautifully and well organized with a disciplinary model and control model. And it is very important to see that if we have some kind of discipline or control system and punishment or fines uh, charge against people who do not maintain law and order or cleanliness or safety measures, then people tend to become more responsible. And here again the question of democracy comes. Now democracy says there should be freedom. But if you actually see the concept of freedom, if the freedom is encroaching the freedom of another, then there is no f point of discussing about freedom. So I think Singapore model is an ideal model because if there is fines and uh, astute measures to protect the civilians and the community, then it makes a safe place for everyone. Now if you see in few uh, districts they've made uh, no plastic zones and made it finable. If you do not uh, follow the rules, then you have to pay a fine. So that is very good as far as uh, the promotion of having a clean environment is concerned. Singapore is also a hub for business and commerce with several multinational companies having their headquarters in the city. Now we will move on to New York City in the United States of America. New York City is the largest city in the United States and is also known for its iconic landmarks such as the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building and the Times Square, all iconic and historical. Why do I say that? If you stay the Statue of Liberty, it's very interesting to see that it was given by the French themselves as a kind of a prize or a gift to United States and it is actually the woman holding the torch of freedom. The Empire State Building is also a classic example of beautiful design and structure uh, in building and also the Times Square becomes very prominent because it is where people, great people address the community. The city is also home to several museums, art galleries and theatres making it a hub for art and culture. New York City is also known for its global financial centre and is a home to the New York Stock Exchange and several multinational programs or corporations. Several multinational corporations and these multinational corporations are also contributing to the finance or the economy of the whole country. So New York City is uh, having a system which is very efficient, extensive subway system and so it is not as populated outside although the subway system is doing away with the congestion and its iconic yellow taxis are a familiar sight on the streets. People tend to walk around the city because it makes congestion free and also it makes people very health conscious. 
The pedestrians are quite friendly and also accommodate to the needs of the people. Another city which we would like to discuss in this video would be Copenhagen of Denmark. Copenhagen is the capital city of Denmark and is known for its sustainable and livable urban environment. The city has a well-developed bicycle infrastructure and more than 50% of its residents commute to work by bike. Copenhagen is also home to several green spaces such as the King's Garden and the Tivoli Garden Amusement Park. It is very interesting to see that a lot of cycle, bicycle uh, infrastructure set up or bicycle pathways set up at every transport system. And this infrastructure development is actually very creative and adopted in many cities. If you see cities like London and also in cities in Canada and United States also follow this model having a bicycle pathway, making it very easy and also health conscious for the people and the commuters. The advantage for this uh, promotion of bicycle pathway is not only it saves en energy, but also it helps the environment and also makes the people health conscious. And environment is quite conducive to have this bicycle pathway. But in India, it is quite difficult in most of the cities because of its hot weather conditions. Irrespective of that, India also is promoting this pathway system, making it one of the health conscious promotion or also environmental sustainable uh, promotion of transport system. The city is also known for its innovative urban planning such as the regeneration of the harbour area into a sustainable urban neighbourhood. So since it's near the port, it is making it very uh, conducive because it's economy driven and also it is attracting a lot of uh, companies and also it is also making it a very environmentally sustainable and conscious uh, European Union member. Copenhagen is also hub for design with several design museums and galleries located in the city. Another city we would discuss would be Melbourne which is in Australia. Melbourne is the second largest city in Australia and is known for its quality of life, cultural diversity and vibrant art scene. The city is also well developed as far as the public transportation system is concerned, including it has a tram network and trains that connect the city centre to the suburbs. Now if you see before the metro rail could come, uh, the trams were quite popular. If you see Kolkata has got trams lines and it is quite popular because it is uh, very smooth sailing to one place to the another. Melbourne has this tram facility like London and making it also very cumbersome and also less uh, cumbersome and also making it very easy and smooth for the people. Melbourne is also known for its food scene with several restaurants and cafeterias offering different cuisines around the world. The city is also home to several cultural attractions such as the National Gallery of Victoria and the Melbourne Museum. Melbourne is also hub for sports with several major sporting events held in the city including the Australian Open Tennis Tournament and the Melbourne Cup horse race because of its uh, weather conditions and also the geographical condition making lush green uh, grass which is very cumbersome and also very good uh, for uh, playing games. Now we have seen some of the best cities of the world. You can actually choose which is your favorite city and it's important to understand more details about these cities. If you take for example, we discussed about Tokyo. Tokyo being congested, it has one of the efficient transportation system and despite having 
natural calamities like flooding and like earthquakes all of a sudden disaster management system is very efficient as far as Tokyo is concerned. If you take Singapore although it is a very small country and Singapore city is even more smaller it is having the advantage of having a very streamlined process system making it one of the economically strong cities in the world. Why do we say that it is a very uh, strong and uh, very efficient system is because it was well planned earlier when it started as a city they had invested into quality uh, works, quality projects which make it very streamlined and well planned. If you see a well planned city will reflect its efficiency by its good work to the community and the community also works in tandem with the city. If you see cities like New York, Copenhagen and Melbourne also standing examples because of its good infrastructure having good uh, I would say these are all smart cities because they have good connectivity and efficient system to reach out to the community easily and create awareness and also this creates citizens who are conscious and responsible to the city and the urban dwellers very efficient and community or conscious making it a very wonderful city. Now let us look into some of the Indian urban centers. Since India is a country with diverse cultures, languages and landscapes, its cities are no exception. Each city is different from the other. And when we see, uh, we can also highlight and uh, see how each city is different from the other city and making it incredibly beautiful. First let us take one of the most popular cities in our country which is Mumbai. Mumbai is also known as the financial capital of India. It is one of the most populous cities of the world and also in India in particular. It is known for its vibrant nightlife, historical landmarks and iconic street food. The city is home to several attractions such as the Gateway of India, Marine Drive and the Elephanta Caves. Mumbai is also a hub for Bollywood. India's film industry and is a home for several film studios. It is a place for everyone who dreams and see that their fantasies are accomplished, their dreams are accomplished. It is not only for the uh, high class but also for the lower and the poor. It is seen that uh, if you see uh, you can see that uh, there are poverty in one corner and then there you see richness in the other corner. You see the plush cars like the Lamborghini, the Mercedes and also the, the smallest and the poorest form of uh, transport, the cycle is also available. The city has a well developed public transportation system including trains and buses making it easy for the residents to compute. It is also a hub for people from different walks of life, from different parts of the country. Despite its difference in language, diverse nature, people are able to live sustainably with a friendly atmosphere and it is incredible to see that people from all walks of life despite its differences are able to live happily. And this being a large populated city, Mumbai is known for its friendly nature and welcoming culture. And of course, uh, the culture is promoted not only for, with reference to one particular state, but from different states. You see, especially from the south, many people move to Mumbai and also from the north move to Mumbai for businesses and also they become more a Mumbaiker than in any other city. Next we will see one of the most other developed city is called Bengaluru. Bengaluru is becoming very crowded nowadays because of its uh, silicon intention. 
Bengaluru is also known as the Silicon Valley of India as it is a city located in southern India. It is known for its pleasant climate, green spaces and vibrant uh, tech industry. The city is home for several research institutes, IT companies and startups. The weather condition is very conducive and it is very good for people from every walk of life to come there. Like Mumbai, Bengaluru has attracted many number of diverse cultured people around the country and also around the world to come and settle because it is not only really a city but also a metropolitan city with people from and I would say uh, even further a cosmopolitan city because people from all walks of life come there to settle with its diverse languages and also diverse culture are able to amicably live in the city because of its climatic condition, the food the culture and also its uh, cafeterias around the night. The city is also home for several parks such as the Kaban Park and Lal Bagh Botanical Gardens making it a popular destination for nature lovers. And now we will move on to Chennai. Chennai is also a little different from uh, other cities which we had discussed. Why do I say that it is little different from the other cities? Because the other cities we discussed, it's about of its diversity and its uh, situation being very cosmopolitan. As far as Chennai is concerned, it is not very cosmopolitan because it is more culture oriented and traditional in its approach. Although the city is attempting to move towards cosmopolitan, it is still rooted strongly towards its tradition and culture. Chennai is known for waking up as early as 4 o'clock in the morning. You go, you see a tea stall open in the Chennai city or you see that people are very active early in the morning. So Chennai is a city where it starts very early and ends a little early too compared to the other cities like Mumbai and Bangalore. So if you take Chennai, Chennai is also known as the Detroit of India and is a city located in southern India. It is known for its vibrant automotive industry historical landmarks and cultural heritage. The city is home to several attractions such as the Kapalishwara Temple, the Fort St. George and of course the beach, the Marina Beach and if you go down further you reach the old Mahabalipuram Road where it takes you to further longer beaches and wonderful beaches. Chennai is also known for its cuisine with several restaurants and street foods stalls offering traditional South Indian dishes. The city has a well-developed public transportation system including buses and trains making it easy for the residents to commute. So the Sene city the advantage is it has been uh, not a very uh, I would say very disciplined city as far as the streets are concerned but then uh, it's like a maze wherever you go you end up to another road you can find a new route so that's very interesting to see if you take Hyderabad Hyderabad is also known as a city of pearls is a city located in southern India it is known for its historical landmarks such as the Charminar and the Kolkata Fort as well as the vibrant cuisine Hyderabad is also a hub for IT industry and is a hope to several software companies. And if you see its well developed public transportation system including buses and trains making it easy for residents to commute. Hyderabad is known for its friendly locals and welcoming culture. Hyderabad became a tech hub and it started developing economically because of its rich minerals and also you, you see that there are a lot of culture involved and there is a more multinationals approaching Hyderabad because of its space and also its resources. We will also discuss about the capital city Delhi. 
Delhi being the capital city of India is a city located in North India and it has landmark places like the Red Fort and the Kutub Binar as well as its vibrant street food culture. Delhi is also a hub for business and commerce and is home for several multinational corporations. The city has a well-developed public transportation system including buses and trains making it easy for residents to commute. Despite its large population, Delhi is known for its rich cultural heritage and diverse population. We have Kolkata. Kolkata is known for its cultural capital of India. It's a city located in eastern India. It is known for its colonial architecture, vibrant culture and intellectual heritage. The city is home to several attractions such as the Victoria Memorial Howrah Bridge and the Kaligat Temple. Kolkata is also known for its cuisine with several restaurants and food stalls and traditional Bengali dishes. The city has a well-developed public transportation system including buses, trams and metro, making it easy for the residents to commute. So we have discussed so many cities like Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai, Mangaluru, Delhi and also Chennai, Hyderabad. So we have seen the various cities of our country and we saw how diverse it is, culturally diverse and still its uniqueness is stands out as one of the renowned cities of the world. The Indian cities is a classic example to show that diverse nature need not divide the city but can unite people. Its diversity is seen only in its cultural practices but then we speak as one city either like a Mumbai or a Chennai or a Kolkatan or a Delhiite or a Hyderabadin or a Bengaluru a person but whatever the city it's in people are able to adjust and that is the beauty about the cities and urban cities although its important functions are economic development multinational companies are coming into these uh, cities despite the multinational coming into these cities it's not lost its flavor its culture its tradition and practices and also it is becoming one of the renowned cities because of its acceptance value and this acceptance uh, value is also increasing with its uh, economy and also popularity and urban areas are becoming a hub for many people who have dreams to follow because of its efficient education system the transportation system cultures food and habits which is making it very interesting now we have seen and discussed many wonderful and beautiful cities around the world as well as within our country and now it is for you to decide which city is very good in terms of the parameters we can take few parameters like its economy its population its infrastructure development and uh, see and compare which city is one of the best city and livable city it's for you to decide and also it is important to understand that urban development is not just um, cosmopolitan in nature but also it lives in culture it also portrays that it evens out the needs of the people it also accepts people from different culture making it unique and different from other areas like the rural areas the rural areas imbibes culture at the same time the urban cities also reflect culture but at the same time it is more uh, convincing to see that it gives employment it gives hopes for the people and uh, community participation becomes inevitable the role of the stakeholders becomes inevitable the civil society plays an important role and to keep the city maintaining I hope you'd have enjoyed this video. 
Thank you very much.